Okay, so what I'm going to show you is how to create an off-axis uh, control or different ways of controlling a joint that isn't oriented exactly on the um, X, Y, and Z axis. So a common example of this would be a hand. So I'm just going to switch to my top view and quickly draw um, some joints that would be like a hand. Okay, we can press up to pick walk and then I'll just draw in the fingers uh, for reference here. So I'll just draw one and then I'll just uh, hit Shift D, drag, hit Shift D again. So I got three fingers there. Okay, so the joint that we're going to look at right now is the uh, first thumb joint, which is called joint two right now. And you can see uh, right now with my move tool again, mine is set to object, we've set it to world, that's normal. But I'll switch it back to object. Okay, so to quickly get in there, you just hold down W, left click, object. Okay. So this shows us how this is oriented, okay? And if I rotate, you can see that it rotates along with that axis, okay? Now normally when you create a control curve, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. I'll go create NURBS primitives, choose a circle, and uh, to quickly get it there, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab the joint. Actually, I'll grab the curve, shift like the joint, and I'll hit parent. Okay. Now, even though this object has not moved, you can see it now has all these values. All right. Now, this is taken on from the parent. So basically, the values of the parent, its positional and rotational values, are trickled down to the child. So if I zero these out, what it will do, it will, zero, it will basically zero it out to the parent. So it basically snaps it to the parent. Okay. So you can see this curve has taken on the rotational and positional values of that joint. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees here just so we can kind of have it around that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unparent it. So I'll hit Shift P and you can see now we get all these values back because it's no longer parented to this one. Okay, so I'm going to freeze this guy because normally it's nice to have your values zeroed out. So if you quickly want to get something back to the default, you can just zero it out. Okay, rather than having to manually try to align it back to where it should have been originally. All right, this becomes important when you're doing weighting and things like that, and even when you're animating. Okay, so now that it's zeroed out, what I want to do is I want to constrain this to this control. So I'll select the control curve first, shift select the joint, constrain parent. Now you can see though, if I grab the rotation, it's no longer rotating on that axis, giving this sort of a weird swivel. Okay. Whereas if I grab the joint itself, which we won't actually animate with, but you can see its its rotation is different than this. Okay, so this becomes an issue. So a couple things we can do. There's probably about three ways I'll show you that you can kind of uh, attack this. So the first way is probably the the simplest. Um, and what you can do is you, if you select the joint. Okay. Now one of the reasons why we actually create controls is so that they're easier to select. Because when you have geometry over top of the joints, it's sometimes hard to see um, which one to grab. Now there's a nice feature that you can now turn on which is called uh, X-ray joints. And what this will do, uh, don't follow along here, I'll just quickly create something. Let's quickly throw in a cube here. Okay, so normally if you have geometry that's covering the hand, it's hard to see the joints through that. You can still select them or you can go in a wireframe. One nice thing you can do though is you can go shading and turn on x-ray joints and then those joints will actually show through making it easier to select. Okay. What you can also do is if you go into the joints attributes, so just like the joint and hit control A and if you scroll down under display we have display handles. Okay, so you'll note if you look right in the center of the joint here, when I turn this on, we get a little plus, like a little locator. And what I can do is I can actually move that around, so I can move it into a position that's easier to select. So you, you can uh, manually type in values there, or you can control or use any of your mouse buttons to click and drag on that value to move it around. Okay, so now we have something, and if I actually select this, this will select the joints and you can see we can still rotate on that axis. Okay. Um, the other way, which is a decent way of doing it, is if you want something a little bit easier to select, 
uh, say like that control curve, what we can actually do is I'm going to go create, you know, create another um, circle here. And I'm just going to leave it exactly in the center. This is kind of important. Okay. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to parent the controller to the joint in a, in a different type of way. Okay. So I'm going to go into my attribute editor just to show you what's going on here. Okay. Actually, no. We'll use the outliner. Uh, you can also use the hypergraph for this. And if I open this up, now you want to make sure you go under display and turn on shapes. Okay, so that now has the checked on. Okay, and if you hit the little plus beside the nerve circle, this looks like a hierarchy. Okay, so we have a shape node which is parented to uh, the transform node. So the transform node houses the information translate, rotate, scale, all that stuff. The nerves circle shape node, what that does is that actually has the attributes of how this thing was created, how it actually looks geometrically. So this is kind of um, the actual shape and then we have the transform. Okay. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to parent the shape node to our uh, joint 2. Okay. So to do that we can't just select, uh, we can try to select the shape, shift select the joint or command click on the joint in the outliner. And if we hit parent, well you can see it parents the whole object. Okay. The transform and the shape. What we want to do is just be able to parent just the shape node. So to do that, we have to actually use a little mel script, or a little mel command to do this. So what we're going to do is down here, we're going to um, type in parent, dash r, which is relative, and dash s, which is shape. So this will actually parent a shape node. Okay. So this step's important. Make sure you select the shape node. Okay. Command or control click on joint 2 and then just click down here and hit uh, return on your keyboard okay now what that did is actually snap this controller over to the joint and now you can see if I click on it, it actually highlights the, jo uh, the joint and it says I'm selecting joint 2 alright so what's actually happening here is if we open this up okay we can actually see that NURB circle shape is a child of joint two. Okay. So basically the shape node actually affects the translate. So if I actually highlight this, you can see it highlights uh, the transform node being the joint, and this is typical. And now you can see we have this empty NURB circle one group node. Okay. Well it's still that transform node, it just no longer has a shape, and you can see I can actually select it, but it doesn't do anything. So I can actually physically delete that. Also, if I want, I can go in and actually still adjust the shape of this curve. Okay, so what I can do is I can right click, go control vertex, and I'm just going to turn off the selection of joints here. I'll highlight all these points, and now I can rotate it. Okay, because right now I'm affecting only the, um, the shape, and I can scale it down. Okay, and now if I hit F8, okay. I can still go in and rotate this and you can see that it selects the joint. So I can select any part of the joint or I can actually select this control curve and it does the same thing. Okay, so those are the two ways we can do it by actually uh, affecting the joints, but sometimes you want to actually be able to turn the joints off and only have uh, the controls to animate with. Okay. So, for example, if I just add uh, the joints to a new layer, and I turn that layer off, you can see it hides all the, you know, the joints are there. If I were to go under Show uh, and turn off joints here, we can actually still select that, which is handy. Um, but if you wanted to actually create a controller, to do the same thing, um, I'll do that with this joint now.